Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brick Workshop. My old track saw cutting station, which has been around for about 18 months, maybe even two years, I'm not sure, has finally been beaten up just that little bit too much. And so it's time to replace it. And so I thought it would be a good idea to go through the process of how I go about doing the top. Now I've created my plan of what I intend to do for the track saw cutting station. And uh, I've also, on this diagram, uh, put some ideas for uh, my MFT3 top, which I might do a new one of those as well. And it's my intention to make this a little bit more presentable and to provide it free of charge for anyone who wishes to see my layouts for both a track saw cutting station and also an MFT3 top. Now, if you want any plans or this uh, from me, I need to have your email address and uh, there's no private messaging service on YouTube anymore. So what you have to do is to include your email address in a comment on this video or any other video uh, and stating what you want. I'll react to it, send you whatever plans you've requested, and I'll then delete that comment. Now let me just remind you what the Path Guide system is intended to do. It helps you create an almost perfect layout of 20 millimeter holes at 96 millimeter centers, where the columns and the rows of those holes are almost exactly at right angles. And from that, you can then create track saw cutting stations or whatever else you might want, uh, so that you can do perfect right angle, 45 degree, and if you make an isometric top, 30 and 60 degree cuts, time and time again, beautifully accurate. And you'll see me using this kit in a few minutes time. And in order to use your track saw cutting station, there are some items which really will help things along. The UJK path fence, uh, which is used to push your wood against, and so it's in the absolute right position before you start cutting. A pair of tall dogs, like these path super dogs. You could use uh, ordinary uh, little pups like these, little dogs, instead of the path fence if you wished. Uh, now, some of these dogs have got chamfered uh, edges on them which sit down into the holes and you might need to purchase a chamfering tool in order to chamfer the top of your holes or else use a router. And of course, we're talking about a track saw cutting station, you need a track saw. But it doesn't have to be uh, a really expensive one, you don't have to have track. It can be virtually any circular saw and you can even use just a simple straight edge rather than track, as long as you keep the saw against the edge and that this is clamped in place every time you use it. This is my blank top. And if you imagine that where I'm standing now is the position you would be if you're using it. So in other words, the top is up there, and the right side is there, and the left side is here. And this is how it's gonna be. I've got my plan. And let me just go one stage back and talk about the sheet of MDF that I used to cut this from. And what I wanted to do from my one sheet of MDF was create my new track saw cutting station and have a piece which is the perfect size for a replacement MFT3 top. MFT3 top is 1100 millimeters wide and 717 millimeters deep. My track saw cutting station is 1720 wide and 1100 millimeters deep. So you've got those two 1100s in both. So that means out of a 1220 millimeter wide sheet, that's a four foot direction for those who are using Imperial, uh, you're gonna lose uh, just a little bit all the way down one long edge. Keep that bit, you might find it useful. Now in my plan, I've drawn a little picture to show where my Festool guide rail is. If you've got a different guide rail, then uh, measure it and put that in place. And then from that, I've been able to work out where I want holes to be. And uh, some of you may already be aware that you can lay out the holes either in a rectangular fashion, uh, like this here, like a normal MFT3 top, or you can use an isometric approach. The normal rectangular pattern allows you to do 90 and 45 degrees. The isometric approach allows you to do 90 degrees, 
30 degrees and 60 degrees. It would be nice if you could have a combination of the two. And that's what I've created here. And you may be able to see that there are some uh, dark lines here. And those lines represent the uh, isometric uh, laid out holes. And the red ones around here, these are the normal holes, which are not on a square grid. So uh, I've worked out what my pattern should be. And from that, I've been able to work out where my hole placement is. I want it to be symmetrical left to right. I want to have one offset hole at the very top here, offset by uh, 48 millimeters. Uh, and so I'm pretty sure I know my layout. Now, the first row of holes that I'm going to create is going to be the key sort of master set of holes. They're the ones from which everything else develops. Therefore, it's absolutely critical that these are in the right place at the first go, and also that they are drilled very, very carefully with no little whoopsies. Now, I've worked out that my offset hole is going to be about 46 millimeters from this edge, but my first true row of holes is going to be 94 millimeters. So I'm going to draw a line along here, which is 94 millimeters from this edge. And the purpose of this line is that it will allow me uh, to position my first path stick because I'll be able to look down through here and line uh, this up. Now, it doesn't matter if, if supposing this line I've just drawn was at an angle like that, it doesn't technically matter because once you have your first row of holes done and they're done really accurately, everything else goes from that. And so your whole top will be perfectly usable, even though uh, your first row of holes wasn't perfectly parallel to this edge. But it's only an aesthetic thing that I want to try and get it right. The next thing is I need to know left to right where my master set is going to be. And it's always best when you've got a top which is bigger than a single path stick is to start in the middle. And that way, when you extend this way, you're just extending by a couple of holes. And when you extend that way, you're extending by a couple of holes. If you started over here and then had to extend by lots of holes, uh, there is more of a chance for error. So start in the middle, that is a key point. And I've worked out that if I want to have my path stick in the middle, uh, the uh, left hand most from where you're looking hole, should, its center should be 331 millimeters from this edge. And again, this is another measurement which is not desperately critical because if it's slightly this way or that way, it really doesn't matter. But I'm just trying to get it approximately right. So 331, and I'm using the graduations on the path stick to do this. Now, let me just talk about path sticks for a second or two. The holes which are down the path stick are in a dead straight line. These path sticks are rulers, and a ruler is not a straight edge. So it is possible that these holes are not absolutely parallel to one edge or the other. And it makes no odds whatsoever. There is no claim made by Axminster or me that the center line of these holes is going to be parallel to either of those edges. So don't worry about it. The key thing is that these holes are in a dead straight line, and that's the important thing. The fact we've put ruler graduations on here is just so you can use this as a ruler from time to time. It's not to have any other function associated with the path guide system. So I've got my crosshairs just there, and I've judged it to be uh, pretty much in the center of that hole. And I've clamped that end. I'm looking for the line that I drew down here to make sure it looks as though it's pretty much in the center of that row of holes. And I'm now going to clamp this end as well. Now, as I said, it's not absolutely critical that there's any relationship between this edge and this line of holes. It's nice aesthetically that they are parallel and I've tried to do that. But once we've got these holes in place, everything else will be created referencing these holes and nothing else. 
Because we've done our one bit of measuring, we no longer need any measuring tools now. There are two drill guides and they differ because one is designed to just go through one of the pass sticks and the other one is designed to go through two. Make sure you put one of them to one side. You want the one which goes through just one pass stick, which has got the shallower of the two bosses here. Now, when you do anything to do uh, with things fitting into the holes on the pass stick, you must make sure that they are properly seated and that there's no gap, that it's not a, a funny angle or anything silly like that. It has to be fitted in. Now, when you first get your path sticks and your other bits of kit, you'll find that these are going to be pretty stiff in there. And that's only because uh, there's no chamfering on here to make it easier to get it in. Uh, and there's no chamfering on there to make it easier to get in either. Uh, this is going to be uh, the first couple of times you're effectively reaming the hole with that. So uh, be prepared to give it a little bit of a, a twist and a push the first few times that you use it. So I've placed for the very first time my pass stick. It's held down with the clamps, but in order to make absolutely doubly sure belt and braces, I'm going to put two holes here and here, and I'm then going to stick a pair of pins in. And these are the first two holes that I'm going to drill. I'm going to lower the, this in so it's engaged, and then I'm going to drill. And I'm using a, a pecking motion that helps to clear away uh, the uh, detritus that comes from making the hole. And I'm now going to stick this pin in. There's the first pin in, and this is belt and braces. This is such an important stage that I want to really make sure uh, that this is absolutely as rock solid as possible. Second pin. Now the pins have got a, a six millimeter shoulder there that must go all the way into the six millimeter hole in the path stick. And this is the most common mistake that people make when using pins to position these path sticks. I'm now going to do the rest of the holes. and It'll take me no time at all. I've now drilled 11 holes. Now at this stage, I want to mark uh, the position where I want to have the line, which will be uh, the line against which I place my guide rail. So in other words, my tall dog, the line of my tall dogs. Looking at my diagram, I count from the end here. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. The sixth one along. Mark that like, like so. And the, the next stage would be either to create the first two columns, one at the end here, one at the end there, or to extend this left and right. It really doesn't matter at this stage. I prefer uh, to do my first two columns. The reason for that is it's better if your first two columns are based on the extremities of the first ruler rather than accidentally doing them up here uh, where they might lose some accuracy. So I'm now going to set up my very first six, six, eight, ten triangle. Position zero on this ruler, the leftmost hole here, the pin goes in. If you have trouble getting these pins to sit properly, engage them like so and then push down and then keep that upward pressure on the path stick as you push in. And I hope you can see that that is properly in that hole. That is the biggest mistake that people make and that's how you're going to end up with an inaccurate top. We now count along six along here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I'm going to put this zero through here. Pins engaged. If your pins are tight, just like with the drill guide, uh, give it a twist just to make sure it's reamed out nicely. Lift as you push down and that's properly seated. Just check, yep, properly seated. So here we are, we now need to go down here to eight and on this one to 10 and get those two to line up. I can see directly through there, but I've got to make sure this drill guide goes through both. 
Now that is properly seated and you can check by putting a little bit of downward pressure there and trying to move the lower of the two path sticks and that is properly seated. Now it's good practice that the path stick or ruler, which, whichever you like to call them, that's coming down here, right angles to that first line, is the lower of the two. The reason for that is that we will be drilling into this and it's best if it's sitting flat on the top of the MDF. So with that, with no pressure on it at all, I'm now going to clamp this in place at this end. Now you may think, well, what's all this fuss about clamping? If ever it's possible to clamp one of these rulers, do so. I'm now going to drill in this position. I can move that to one side. I'm now taking my third pin, putting it in that hole, and again, making sure that it is properly engaged. I can now go along here and do the rest of those holes. Remember that we just used the three millimeter drill guide with the extra long boss here. We don't need it now. We need the one with the shallow boss because we're going through just one ruler. So there's that first column. We're gonna do the same at the other end. So it's the same setup as before and it's set up properly because I can't move this. I'm now gonna clamp that in place. So we've got our first row at the very top there, our reference row. We've got the two initial columns, one there and one there. And now it's a good idea to do a check. I've put a pin in here through position 10 on this path stick and that's seated properly. I'm gonna seat this pin so it's properly located in that six millimeter hole. I'm then gonna lower this down and then keep a bit of upward pressure on, on the ruler and push down and in it goes. And if that goes in so that the path stick is nice and flat, the pin is engaged there, the pin is engaged there, that means then that those first two columns that we've done are perfect. Now, as I've got this ruler uh, positioned as it is at the bottom here, I might as well drill the holes here. Now, just to illustrate, I'm not gonna clamp it this time. I'm happy that it's held in properly at both ends. Now, you may think, gosh, he's going to so much effort and taking so much care uh, with these few holes, you know, clamping and putting extra pins in and so on. Now, this track saw cutting station, I hope will last me a couple of years at least. And in that time, I want to make sure that every single cut that I do, that I want at right angles, 45 degrees, 30 or 60 degrees, I want them to be perfect every time. My old track saw cutting station was exactly like that. It's still giving me perfect cuts right now, but it's just a bit beaten up. So I'm taking the care now to make sure this one's gonna give me the same service. And once this first line is drilled, I can then move up. So I'm now gonna consult my plan and just see where I actually need to put uh, lines and rows of holes. Now, just so you're properly orientated, this is the top. I would normally be standing there if I'm using the track saw cutting station, but this is the top. And I want an offset hole 48 millimeters up here. Now, I've drilled that original master set of holes. I've drilled the bottom set, the ones five up from there and the ones seven up from there. Now to get this 48 offset here, what I'm gonna do is look for the 48 on this ruler, and I'm gonna put a pin through the 48 here and into that hole there. And I'm gonna seat that properly. Now if I line this up properly, I can see the 48 which is here and the 48 which is at the far end there, both sit over holes. So I'm gonna put pins in each of those. So I now know that this ruler is properly set up. I now know that that column of holes, uh, which was made up of holes done horizontally, is perfect. So I can now put my offset hole in at the far end. Before I go any further, let me just take you through how we're going to enlarge this three millimeter hole to turn it into a 20 millimeter hole. We're gonna use this drill guide. In order to set this drill guide up, we must have, because it's gonna be at the end here, the 20 millimeter cutter will be coming through here, we must have pinholes here and here. So in other words, those two must be pinholes so that this can be set in place and that hole drilled. 
Now, I think if I were to now put this 20 millimeter cutter in here, I'm not going to drill this hole, but, and that's, that's there ready to go, and in would go a three millimeter pin there and there, and then that block is now nicely set up so I can now drill that hole. Now it's uh, time to extend uh, the one, two, three, four horizontal rows uh, so they go all the way to the left and all the way to the right. There's a hole, an existing hole here. I'll put that in and I've now got another hole, another hole, another hole to go in there. Three holes to go in there. That's in. That's nice and secure. I could put a third pin if I wanted. I don't think it's necessary. And I'm now going to drill one, two, three holes. Now I'm going to do the same on the left hand side. And when you've got uh, a long run like this, nothing else supporting uh, the ruler, make sure you don't apply any pressure left or right as you're doing that drilling. And if you've done it properly, this should then go straight down in and engage that shoulder. So I'm doing the same along this uh, bottom line now. And we've got our two intermediate rows, there's one there and one there to do. And rather than doing them this way, which will be quite laborious because all I need is a hole at the end in each case, because I've got a hole there and a hole there, I can put this in place like so and do the holes that I need all the way down this outer edge. That's engaged. I'm going to drill the middle one, put a pin in, and then drill the rest. At this stage I could clamp this, but I'm being very careful not to exert any lateral pressure. Now I want you to see that it is possible to exert lateral pressure at this stage, and it will make the ruler move. So if you're not confident enough to be able to do a drilling operation without exerting lateral pressure, put a clamp on. Uh, I'm quite confident I can do this very carefully, no lateral pressure. In that goes, and just so there's no risk of any other lateral pressure, I'm going to drill the rest of the holes with that pin in there. And of course we're going to do the same at the other end. Now on my diagram uh, I've got some isometric holes as well. And so that I can easily identify which holes are isometric holes and which are holes are uh, rectilinear holes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some coloured lines that follow the root of uh, each set of holes. And for these ones which are at uh, right angles to each other, I'm going to use red, which conforms with what I've done on my diagram. And this centre line and uh, part of this top line is common to both, so I'm actually going to put some black alongside the red. Now for the isometric holes, we're going to have 10, 10 and 10. We've already got the 10 drilled up here. So I'm going to put this pin through the zero here and into that hole and in that hole. That's properly in. We've got to get the two 10s lined up. In order to do that, we're going to use the 3mm drill guide with the larger boss. So into that one, into that one check that it's in by trying to move the bottom one, it won't move. Now, it's not always possible to have a clamp that goes that far. In fact, mine is pretty touch and go. So you can extend your clamp very slightly, it won't be quite as strong, but it'll be good enough. And all you do is just take a, a buckshe piece of wood, put it across like so, making sure again that that is properly seated. And what we're going to do now is try and get this as far in as possible and clamp and that will be exerting some pressure down onto this one here. Because this is the lower one, I'm going to drill those holes now. Once this hole here is drilled, uh, I can then remove this uh, path stick here. So I can move that out of the way. I don't need this again at the moment, but I do need to put a pin where I've just drilled. I'm leaving that clamp in place for belt and braces. Now I'm now going to use the small shouldered drill guide and I'm going to put a hole through the middle here and I'll put a pin in this hole. Now if when you've drilled a hole as I've just done there you find you can't put a pin in 
perfectly, shoulder as well, then it means you've not drilled the hole properly. Because as long as that ruler path stick doesn't move at all, that should go in without any bother whatsoever. Right, now that's pretty well held in place, I can now drill the other holes. Right, so that's that first one. I can remove this clamp. I'll move that to one side. And now I can put a pin through here and the other pin at the top here. Right, so those pins are in properly. I'm going to put one in the middle. And I'm going to put a pin in there straight away as well. That pin went in with no hassle whatsoever. So we now need to take the isometric pattern a little bit further. And this time we're going to go off in this direction. So we've done the first two there, we've got the top one, and now we're going to go that way. Now the first place to pin this is in that dead centre one there. And then we're going to look for an intersection which is on a black line just there. Pop that in at the five point, find the hole. So those are both in as they should be, which means now I can do this diagonal line. I'm going to start with the one at the end, pin it and then do the rest. And having completed uh, that line, I'm going to take these two pins out, swing this around and do a, a mirror image over here. And with those done, uh, I can now uh, do my black lines to indicate that those are part of the isometric layout. Now I had to have a little practice go in order to uh, really get this right. Now uh, we've already created our uh, two elements here and here of our isometric layout. But we need to take it further and have a line of holes here and, a, 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 and also a symmetrical line of holes there. But the holes along this line are not 96 apart. And so in order to put holes along this line, you have to put a path stick across, and pick up holes which are in the four black lines that we've already created. One, two, three, four. And so I've picked up one there, picked up one there, and that's put that path stick in the right place, which means I can now drill here, uh, which I've actually already done in my practice, uh, which puts a hole along that black line. Now we're going to have to drill that out to make that a 20 millimeter hole. Therefore, in order for the guide to work, we need some three millimeter holes all around it. And we actually need to have a 20 millimeter hole there, one there, one on each of these black lines. So actually it's gonna be a good idea to fill in several of these uh, intermediate uh, th three millimeter holes now. Now the thing to take away from this is that in all this drilling, the only holes which are at an angle uh, that are 96 millimetre apart are those which are part of an equilateral triangle. So in other words, our original two triangles, which made the original layout with one, two, three, four, and all the subsequent ones. So that means that this is part of that equilateral triangle or that equilateral triangle, or that one, and so on. So these are 96 apart. And I will need to carry this along there, and I need to do all the others. I'm going to do that now, and then I'm going to put all the black lines in and take it from there. Right, I've finished the, the laying out of the three, three millimeter holes now. The black lines, indicate my isometric pattern. The red lines represent my uh, square pattern for the holes. Now to make uh, life sort of clearer, <laughs> although it may confuse things, I'm very not sure, uh, I've marked some of these holes with little green lines either side. Those are holes which will be used to position a 20 millimeter guide block in order to get the holes uh, which are on some of these um, black lines here. This will allow you to do 90 degree cuts, 45 degree cuts, and also 30 and 60. You may have noticed this brown line which goes up there and some little brown crosses. I don't intend to put 
uh, holes which will be on the kerf line for my saw. And that's roughly where that brown line is. So it's now time to start the 20 millimeter drilling. Now the kit we need to is the drilling block, the drill, and it has a stop collar. And we're going to use two of the three millimeter pins that we've been using already. And later on, we'll need to use a pair of these locator dogs. That's when we're doing the final bits of drilling and we've got no more three millimeter holes left. In addition, you need a drill. And I would suggest uh, you use a dust port, but if you don't have one, you're going to have to hold your dust extractor uh, next to the drill guide to get rid of uh, the waste. If you don't get rid of that waste, then everything starts to go wrong very quickly. So you do need to have an extractor at the side here. And the dust port just makes it that much easier. Now, if you are going to put some form of protection on the surface of your MDF, uh, oil or uh, polyurethane or whatever it might be. Uh, either now is the time to do it or before you started on the three millimeter holes. It doesn't matter. But do not do it after you've drilled the 20 millimeter holes because then whatever the oil or varnish is will go down into those holes and it will make dog fitting very, very difficult indeed. So now positioning stop on there, that's firmly attached. That is deep enough to go all the way through. So I've connected the dust port, the extractor hose is connected, and I can start and stop my extractor with this little button here, the Bluetooth attachment. Very useful. If you buy a Festool extractor, make sure you've got Bluetooth, it's brilliant. So I've put my drill in, it's now in the right position, and I can now locate this. Now, my preferred method is to get the drill located first, the point of the drill. Once you've done that, the other bits and pieces are pretty simple. There we go. And that, you'll find, is absolutely rigid. It's really super duper. And that's the beauty of the system, is that because that won't move a tiny bit, you're going to have guided drilling here. Your hole's going to be in the right place. Remember to use a pecking motion. I'll just connect this up. The pecking motion, you drill a little bit, come back, drill a little bit more, come back and drill again. Now, I hope you notice that the, the waste was being sucked back into the, the system and that's the first hole done. Do check when you move this along that you haven't got one of these little discs still attached there because if you do, uh, then when you start the next bit of drilling, you'll find it's very difficult to get it started. So we, we can't move to the adjacent hole because the pin would be where this hole was. We're gonna to move to the next hole. So we've moved along to the next hole. Same as before, we're gonna get the drill tip located first, makes things Really, really simple. Push one pin in and then the other. That is absolutely tight. Reconnect the drill and start the extractor. Now I'm going to continue uh, doing uh, my other holes. I'll only stop once or twice to do a bit of filming if there's any particular thing I want to point out. I just want to point out one other way that things can go wrong. Uh, you've put the point down onto a, a three millimeter hole, so that's there that pins in a three millimeter hole, you put this pin in, you think, oh yeah, it seems solid enough, but aha, watch, there's a hole there. So be careful that you're not putting a three millimeter pin down into fresh air because that really will not be a very good idea. Well, I think that's the last of the holes that I can do with the uh, 20 millimeter cutter in that position using the pins. Um, I'm now going to swap it over to the other position and use the locator dogs. I've made one mistake, which was to put a hole here along my kerf line. It doesn't matter. So in order to do the changeover, I'm going to loosen off the collar, remove that, take that away, move the drill bit over to the other position, reinstate the collar on here. Just make sure, yep, that's fine. And so now if I want to uh, drill, say, the hole that should be here, 
then I use the tip of the drill just as before to locate it just there a bit and then I'm going to put a locator dog there and a locator dog there. Notice how nicely those go in and these really do hold things in place really well. Now the holes that you've just drilled should be tight and if you can just hear, I'll do my best, you hear how that went in? It's obviously a, a tight push fit and the same with this one as well. Now just supposing we have a hole I don't know, here and say it's a little bit on the tight side and you want to uh, make that just an easier fit. This is what you can do. You can get the 20 millimeter drill block, put the, the drill in it, put a, a, a large locator dog either side, locate this properly, and then what we're going to do is to ream it out. Like so. Take that away, and then that should be just a little bit looser, and it is. As I said earlier, holes in MDF can have a sort of furry lining and after changes in humidity uh, that furriness can increase. Now on my track saw cutting station I got four places where I might use the Path Super Dogs and I use them with the chamfer part there. So those four holes I've got to chamfer them. Now you can either use the chamfer tool and there it is, which you can buy from Axminster. Or you can use a router and do it uh, with a chamfer bit in the router. If you've only got a few to do, this really is the easiest way. And you can now see my super dog fits in all the way down, tighten it up, and that's absolutely spot on. And it will be stiff to come out because the holes in this table are fresh and haven't been used much. There we go. Now I'll be using this with the super dogs along this line. Uh, I'll be working from that end and if my pieces of wood aren't that uh, wide I might put this super dog there or there. This track saw cutting station is now ready to use. <laughs>